focus on the cross, which I see the cross as the center of history. Everything before was leading up to that. Everything after that is emanating from there. This is the center of history. And as Jesus is breathing his last breath, the veil in the temple, you know, tears from top to bottom. And one of the ways to, that I like to talk about that is that God is now not stuck behind a curtain in the temple. He is on the loose in the world. And so part of what it means to be a Christian is to figure out what God is doing and, and join with that. This becomes a way of life, not a belief system. And so, so Christianity to me is not a, a simply a matter of beliefs. It's a being thing. It's a, it's a new way to be a human being. So I, I think seeing Christianity as a belief system sells short what it is that God's trying to do. What it means to follow Jesus is that you, you hold nothing back. You follow with your feet. And so the way I often talk about it is I'll say that we're meant to organize our common life together in such a way that we image God to all creation. So when people look at us, they see past us to the reality behind it, which is that God is the master of the universe. He's made everything. It's all his. And that we somehow get to play some in integral role in his or right ordering of creation. And this is what it means to be human. So when we're asking the question, what would the world look like if God were in charge? What would public space look like if God were in charge? You look at Jesus. If you want to understand what it means to be a human being, you, you look at Jesus. If you want to understand how to order our common life, how to enter into public space, we go to his his teaching and we say that actually this is it and and this is terribly impractical and makes absolutely no sense and yet it's exactly what we have to do and be one morning last winter i just i had just showed up at my office and had sat down at my desk to do my morning prayers i had my computer up and i for some reason, I, I glanced over at my email, or maybe it made a noise that told me to look at it, but um, they were in the subject line of this email, it said, urgent prayer request in all caps, and I was like, oh no, something bad's happened. The email said something like, I just um, passed over this bridge, and I'm pretty sure I saw Wendy, this woman from our church, standing on the bridge with a woman who was about to jump off. And I remember thinking at the time that if if God was going to ever ask somebody to go stand on a bridge with some lady, it would be Wendy. She's this woman who lives with a, kind of a radical yes to the world. You know, she's available. She has lived her life um, available to God. So she had a broken foot. She had just broken her foot that week, and so she couldn't drive. And so her husband, Tom, was taking her to, um, to work. And they were going over this bridge, and she happened to see the woman um, on the bridge, and just something looked off. And she said, oh my gosh, Tom, she's going to jump. Like, that lady's going to jump. Turn around. And Tom, didn't, he was watching traffic. He hadn't seen it, but he flipped the car around. They went back, and she hops out, broken foot at all, jumps over the, the guardrail, and goes over to this woman. And the woman, she can tell, she's distraught. By this time, she's climbed over the fences on the outside of the fence. There's nothing between her and rush hour traffic going underneath this bridge. And Wendy starts speaking to her. And, and the woman is crying, obviously upset. And so Wendy reaches her hands through the, as far as she could, through the chain link fence and, and starts grabbing a hold of her, her um, clothing and saying, you don't want to do this. I mean, just saying the things that we would say to somebody who's about to, you know, do this horrible thing. And, but what Wendy said that has always stuck with me, she said at one point the woman looked at her and they locked eyes. And she realized in that moment, I just have to keep, I have to keep, maintain eye contact. And she kept just saying words to her, words of hope, like, you never know how things are going to end up. You don't want to do this. And the woman, um, uh, was sharing a little bit about what was going on, why she was in the state that she was in, and when he's holding on to her, and they're they're locking eyes, and um, 
I remember at the time thinking that's, that's what it means to be a Christian is that we lock eyes with the culture somehow, however it is. We're just available. She's just driving to work. She wasn't on the mission field. She wasn't, you know, she's not a preacher. She was driving to work and saw some woman in trouble and she goes and she locks eyes with her and she holds on and doesn't let her do this awful thing she's planning to do. And um, finally the the police showed up and some a fireman in a harness pulled the lady off the ledge. Um, but I, I think what lasts with me from that story is this image of locking eyes with the culture and that somehow this is part of what it means to be a disciple. You know, we're obligated. And so we, we grab a hold of people and lock eyes with them. And we try to speak words of hope. And when the rest of the world speaks um, or lives desperation and meaningless and death and destruction and what does it all mean, we speak hope, we speak resurrection. And that this somehow changes reality.